fantastic. It's a great honor to be able to do this. Well, thanks. I am willing to begin right away if you are. I'm 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 ready. All right, fantastic. We're here with Mike Mignola, creator of Hellboy and comic book legend in every right. And I really, really wanted to start with uh, your early work, um, specifically Rocket Raccoon. Ah, I was yes. wondering. I was wondering, did you ever think that a crazy character like Rocket Raccoon would ever be the fan favorite of a huge upcoming movie like this? I still have a hard time believing it. Um, yeah, certainly not. No, it, I was. You know, it's it's always been a strange book. Um, at the time, I was just so lucky to have work because I wasn't really cut out to do superheroes. So I was just happy that this odd thing was around that you know gave me something to do for a year. Um, and and it's been weird over the years that there have always been people coming up to me at shows saying, you know, I love this book or, you know, this was my favorite book when I was a kid or, you know, whatever. So, you know, I, I certainly never expected it to, to, to be around all these years later. Well, that's, yeah, I'm sure that's very interesting and I, totally unexpected, I'm sure. And it's funny you should mention the, uh, you didn't think you were cut out for superheroes. Uh, because you've done quite a bit of superhero work. Um, yeah, you know, I I, I I always think that I kind of skirted around superheroes. I was I never did, I I don't think I ever did a lot of superheroes. Um, or if I did them, I tried to you know I I was looking for non traditional superheroes or or you know superheroes that had a, set in a different location. Like I did a Wolverine book, but it was a Wolverine book that was mostly about cavemen. You know, I did a Batman book, but it was about, you know, Victorian era Gotham City. Um so yeah, I, I was I was never cut out for superheroes. I was trying to avoid the superheroes in an industry that was mostly about superheroes. So, you know, I did the best I could. And got out as soon as I, as soon as I could. Was uh was that a a big factor? Did you want to get out and do your own thing as quick as you could? Was it was it your way well, of trying to build your name? Yeah, there there was so little conscious decision making in all this. Um, I, you know, maybe if I had found a book in mainstream comics that I was comfortable drawing, um, I, I'd still be there, or I would have stayed longer, but. It was really, I, I knew the kind of material I was comfortable drawing, and I was, I just wasn't finding it, or those jobs weren't coming to me. Um, I did, you know, create a Batman book, um, like that. I did a one issue Batman story called Sanctum, that took place in a graveyard, and then in some kind of a, um, you know, afterlife kind of Victorian year, you know, Victorian ruined, old house with a ghost and a kind of a vampire kind of a thing. Um, and that was the first story, or one of the very first stories I plotted. It was certainly the first mainstream story that I plotted myself. And having done that, I realized, oh, this is the kind of material I want to do. It's the kind of stuff I read. It's the kind of stuff I'm a fan of. I'd like to do more stuff like this. So, so yeah, one of the few conscious decisions I had to make is, do I stay in mainstream comics and, you know, try to create projects like this built around established characters, or if I know the kind of material I want to do, do I just make up my own guy? And so that was, you know, creating Hellboy was a, a, an effort to create a book that I would be comfortable drawing. Uh, and, and, you know, without, you know, kind of hoping that somebody would read my mind or, or let me do that with, with other, you know, company owned characters. Okay, and how did it end up being your own creator owned characters? Well, or... the only way, the only way to make up your own character that you could control was to, you know, make up your own character. So, yeah, certainly nobody at Marvel or DC was saying, hey, Stay here and make up your own character. And, you know, it just didn't make sense. And at that time, you know, the image guys had gone off and done their stuff. So the idea of going off and creating your own, own character was pretty, you know, it, it's what everybody was thinking about. It was it was not a a, a big uh, leap. 
because so many guys were doing it. So it just seemed to make, you know, make sense. And, at the, and again, it, it was very easy for me because at that time, you know, John Byrne was doing stuff at Dark Horse or was about to do stuff at Dark Horse. Frank Miller was doing Sin City at Dark Horse. Art Adams was making up his own character. So we were all in the same boat. And so the best piece of timing for me, right place, right time, was being, you know, uh, in contact with all these guys. So we were able to go into Dark Horse as a group and say, we'd like you to, you know, carve out a separate imprint for us at Dark Horse. And when you walk into, you know, in a group with Frank Miller, Jeff Darrow, Dave Gibbons, Art Adams, you know, you're you're in good company. You have a lot. You have a lot of clout and star power there. Yeah, I didn't, but the guys <laughs> I was standing next to did. So, um, yeah, it was nice. And 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 I think as a result, Hellboy got noticed. You know, where it might not have had I just done a book of Dark Horse. I think you know, Dark Horse would have published. Hellboy without the the legend imprint, I think. Um, but it might have just come and gone with, with no notice. But if you're in this group, which for a brief moment in comic book history made headlines, um, yeah, you, you know, there was a spotlight for a very brief period of time. There was a spotlight on this legend imprint. You know, we were on the cover of Wizard Magazine, and there's Hellboy standing next to Marv, you know, from Sin City, and, you know, Jeff Darrow's big guy. You know, suddenly you're like, oh, you're one of those guys. <laughs> so, it, it, while I, I might not have actually been one of those guys, to the general public, I looked like I was one of those guys. So, so that, yeah, that worked out pretty well for me. Well, even if you weren't one of those guys at the time, you certainly became one of, if not the guy. Well, they all, most of the other guys went away. <laughs> so it, it, it helps if you're the last guy standing. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're a super household name, especially with comic people. And, you know, how did you, you, you mentioned how you came up with the art and semi inspiration with the Batman book. How did you come up with Hellboy himself? Um, it, it was basically, well, I had drawn this, this monster character once or twice just for fun. There was no story or anything. And one time I drew this character, I wrote Hellboy on him just because he had this belt buckle thing that looked like it needed something. So I just wrote Hellboy on it and I thought it was funny. So I never, at that time I wasn't consciously looking to do a creator own book, but I made up this lunky monster guy I made up this name and when a year or so later I got serious about doing a creator own thing I thought well I was drawing that thing just for fun and that name made me laugh so maybe that's my character I knew the stories I wanted to do when it came to actually creating a character my only thought at the beginning was come up with a character you're not going to get bored drawing because, you know, the, the, the type of story I wanted to do goes back to like Victorian era occult detective guys. So my first thought was the kinds of stories where you bring in a, a hero, a, a, a human usually, to investigate some kind of supernatural thing. Um, there was never any thought about, you know, who this character is or there would be some big backstory to this character. But then I thought, well, if I'm, if I, you know, I like drawing this monster. If I make him my good guy, because any kind of human I'm going to get bored drawing. But if my good guy, my regular hero guy is a monster and all I really want to do is draw monsters, <laughs> then maybe that's the way to go. And, you know, even with the first miniseries when I started it, there, there was no plan to have any more origin of Hellboy than what we got in the first few pages of the first comic. Um, you know, some kind of event that would land him on Earth, and then boom, he's just a regular guy, except he's more fun to draw. Uh, and then it was just as I started doing more and more stories that I kind of got into who this guy was, and then, it, you know, it all kind of changed after that. And now here we are, it's 20 years later. Yeah. And Who would have thunk it? I, did you? Uh, certainly not. 
I mean, my, you know, my feeling is, and I've, I've, o- I've always been afraid of getting too optimistic. So when I did Hellboy, going into Hellboy, my goal was to do this one series, and if nothing else, I would be able to look back at this one thing I did, and, you know, as, after I've limped back into Marvel or DC Comics to get whatever work I could, I just I felt it was important to at least once have done a book that where I got to put all my shit out there, you know, all the shit that was inside my head, all the kinds of things I wanted to do. But realistically, I, you know, I didn't anticipate getting to do it more than once, which is why that first Hellboy story wraps up pretty neat and tidy. You know, I wasn't, I wasn't looking at 20 years worth of stories. I just said, I'm going to do this. If it works, I have a million ideas for where this thing can go. And I did, and I created that world and that character so that I wouldn't get bored playing in that world with that character. Um, but, you know, I, I didn't allow myself to really seriously think I'd get to do it again, let alone be doing it for 20 years. Well, you, you kind of answered what I was about to ask, but at what point in doing Hellboy did you realize, holy crap, I need to create a big origin and all kinds of stuff for him? Well, I, you know, I, I mean, even in the first series, um, you know, the way I, I, well, still the way I work, but still the work, way I worked a lot in those days, I would lay out pages and I would do, you know, design pages and I'd end up with these wonderful sequences where two characters are talking to each other. And then I realized when it comes to scripting them, I had no idea what they were supposed to be saying to each other. And on the first series, even though John Byrne scripted it, I, you know, I gave him liner notes for everything. So we have this confrontation between Hellboy and Rasputin, and Rasputin starts, you know, yakking on about Hellboy's destiny. And I didn't really know I was going to go there, but <laughs> they needed to be talking about something. And then with the second miniseries, Wake the Devil, you know, the same thing happened, but in a bigger way, where I have this fight scene between Hellboy and the goddess Hecate, and again, I had no idea what they had to be saying to each other. It was just a fight scene, but I can't write those nonsense fight scenes where characters just are just wisecracking, you know, so, especially with the bad guy. The bad guy, you know, it's a goddess. She has to be saying something profound. So then she rolled out this stuff about Hellboy being the beast of the apocalypse. And I'm sitting there going, holy shit, really? Uh, but okay, you know, she has to be saying something. So that's where things really started sliding and, and the book really shifted focus to being about Hellboy. And that's why none of the other characters, there, was, there wasn't room for the other characters in this book. My focus became about Hellboy and not Abe Sapien and Liz Sherman. I didn't really know what to do with those characters. Because, um, you know, the original idea was a team book. But it turned out this main character was the one I really cared about, that I was really interested in, and I just didn't have, you know, room or patience to, to deal with the other characters. Is that what brought upon BPRD? Yeah, I mean, it was a couple of years later, but we just started kind of, you know, I was, I was saying to the editor, you know, I'm just never going to get around to using these guys. So what if we try this? What if we do this experiment and see if these other characters can carry their own book? And, uh, you know, certainly I'm not sure exactly when that BPRD series happened. I'm sure it was before the movie. But certainly as, you know, like, like everything changed, you know, after the movie, suddenly it was like it was very clear that this team, you know, could work on its own. You know, that there was enough attention on this stuff, that the Hellbit thing was strong enough, that people had, you know, fond enough, you know, uh, feelings about these other characters that, that they could work. Um, so, you know, we did two arcs of BPRD written by other people, and then I came in and wrote the third arc myself, which by then, I think we saw that this thing could work. I came in and wrote the third one, which kind of set the stage for everything that would come after. Uh, and then with John Arcudi coming on, it became 
very clear that he was the writer who could really, you know, carry this thing. Okay. Well, clearly he did, you did, because it, it's lasted just as long as Hellboy and is just as acclaimed as well. Yeah, I mean, there's more of it than there is of Hellboy, um, cause it, it isn't bogged down with a really slow artist like me. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it is, it's a wonderful thing to look around and see this world that's grown up, that's expanded really organically. I mean, there was no decisions anywhere along the line that said, you know, we need more books. It's a commercial decision. It was never a commercial decision. It was just, we have a million ideas or I have a million ideas for, you know, these different characters. Um, let's see if we can find somebody to draw, you know, and, 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 and you know, bring these characters to life. I mean, it's, it's so often in a book, I would introduce a character maybe only in just one panel. And sometimes, you know, that, that goes nowhere. It's just texture. And other times, you mention something and you, and, you know, while you're, you're on to the next page, part of your brain is going, yeah, you know who that guy is? He's this guy and he did this and he did that. And it all kind of starts snowballing. And before you know it, you got five, five, you know, different miniseries cooking in your head about a character that was only referenced in one panel. That seems to, I mean, you did very well with it. It all worked yeah. out. Um, well, and again, I, I think the, the fact that it, it, it was all done very organically and it all makes for this richer world, I think that shows on some level rather than it being... Uh, you know, a commercial decision to cash in on something that was working. Oh, very nice. Well, I, you know, a little bit of off of that is, you know, Hellboy and the DPRD universe is so deeply rooted in myth and legend. Um, was that always uh, an interest for you? Did you have anything to do with that in college, or did it just seem to happen organically like everything else? Um. Yeah, I I had read a lot of folklore and mythology over the years. I was always very interested in that. And the beauty of that stuff is, um, well, A, the stories exist already, so you just have to go back and and, and steal from them. Um, and you don't have to make up names. I was always definitely afraid of making up uh, fantasy names. So, you know, that's why our first major villain is Rasputin. It's a great name. And he's got a history and all.